Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and hello if you're new. Make sure that you subscribe before you leave. That way you'll never miss out on another pick a card reading. I do one on my channel every single Friday. Okay, so today we're going to be getting into the energy of the rest of the year. We're already in October. We have two, three months left. Um, and I really want to tap into and get a few messages of what we should look for, what we should be ready for, what we should be focusing on and what we should not be focusing on. So we're going to get into that the rest of 2021. And what I'm going to have you do is pick a pile or the image on the card, or you could pick a Hamsa charm. So we have pile number one, or if you guys hear that, that's Kobu, my dog. Um, pile number one, or we have the red Hamsa hand. Pile number two, or the black Hamsa hand. Pile number three, the golden Hamsa hand. Or pile number four, the green Hamsa hand. All of these are resin infused with oils, crystals, and herbs, if anybody is interested. Um, I will leave the link to my shop down below, and I work on them on my altars, and then I send them out to you. So with that being said, let's get into your reading. Pile number one, or everyone that picked the red Hamsa hand. So this is infused with herbs, oils, and crystals for the intention of protecting lovers and love energy. So that could even be like self-love. Um, that is this Hamsa, and so there is a reason that you were drawn to this. I feel like there is a need for you to, right now, protect your love energy, and if you are in a relationship, maybe do some protection spells or rituals or put some protection on your relationships whether that be with yourself or an intimate partner or whoever um let's get into your reading the rest of 2021 is going to be a lot to do with intimate relationships um whether that be with yourself or others i feel like there will be some focus on your personal relationships a lot and the first card we have here is Surrender to Your Soul's Path. So your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson and every moment. And I feel like this has a lot to do with your relationships. And, you know, you're going to get to really see the lessons and appreciate the moments and not be so serious or not always be thinking, I should be here in my life by now, or I should be doing this by now, or stuff like that. That's whenever your mind goes there for the rest of the year, just stop. Like, become aware that your thoughts are there and understand that you're exactly where you're supposed to be because every lesson, every moment, everything, you have to experience it. You can't just go straight to your goal, or you can't just go straight to a happy relationship, whether you're with yourself or someone else there's lessons and growth and trial and error and different kinds of experiences, different kinds of conversations, different kinds of emotions and feelings. There's so much in a relationship and I feel like the rest of 2021 is going to be focused on those things for you. The next card we have here is Surrender Denial. So accept people and situations exactly as they are without denying the difficulties. Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. So, you know, don't put on blind eyes. Don't suppress anything. Don't brush anything under the rug when it comes to your relationships for the rest of the year. Be honest. Take the blinders off. Look at the situation, the person, the relationship for what it is. Like, explain to yourself how do you feel in this relationship? How do you feel in front of this person? How do you feel in this person's presence? Is it good? Is it bad? Or do you get nervous? Do you get what? Like, evaluate your relationships. Um, that's a big thing. You're going to be evaluating a lot of your relationships for the rest of the year. Next up, we have the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is a very good card because it tells me that there's materialistic benefits coming in. Um, and you are a very giving person by nature, but I feel like you kind of, <clears throat> you go to, 
the extreme where either you're too giving sometimes or sometimes you just don't want to give shit. <laughs> so that's okay. Again, you have to evaluate how you feel about what you're giving. Um, Six of Pentacles also brings financial help, a lot of stability and this energy of having more than enough. Like you planted a seed thinking you're going to get one tree, but instead you got like 10. That's Six of Pentacles energy. Like you plant something, but you get more than what you bargained for, more than what you asked for. Um, and Six of Pentacles also is talking about sharing. So in this case, a lot of the attention is going to be on your relationships. And so it's okay for you to share how you feel. See, take the blinders off, take the, you know, filter off where you're trying to be so nice when you explain things. It's okay to be honest and nice at the same time. Now the Four of Swords we have is kind of, you have really, really good things going for you, but you are either too bored, too unhappy, or confused, or lost to see all of these good things in your life. And in this case, it is the good relationships in your life. And um, Four of Swords tells you that it's time to let bygones be bygones and <clears throat> time to put certain things in the past. Um, this also calls for you to look at things from a new fresh perspective because the way that you're looking at things or situations or your relationships it's causing disappointments boredom um and stagnancy so there needs to be like a letting things go <clears throat> and as i say that twice my throat starts clogging up so i do feel like there's things regarding your throat chakra that you need to speak up about. Um, and then we have the Eight of Pentacles here. Eight of Pentacles is a really good card. You guys are very, very hard workers. And sometimes you may get the um, idea or in your head that people are taking advantage of you or that you're working too hard and other people are not. And it kind of gets in your head. Eight of Pentacles tells me that you are about to turn something into an income. So for the rest of the year, pay attention to opportunities that may come where you can turn it into an income. A lot of you may be getting new employment, raises, promotions at work. You may be turning an idea into a business. Um, a lot of you, your talents are gonna be rewarded sometime within the rest of the year. And most likely it's going to be through like money, materialistic, like income. Um, let's head over to this right here. The frog. May the lily beneath your breasts allow you to drink from its healing waters. Be still for there is serenity behind the drowning croaks. So again, like in this case, it's to me, it's like screaming about looking at your relationships differently. There's something there that need, maybe needs to be healed or is on the verge of healing and you don't see it. Um, this is a really, really good sign. I feel like a lot of relationships in your life are going to heal. And it's going to be very, very good for you because it's going to allow for room for growth in your money area of your life. Now, this card right here we have, it looks like a little fairy or a little angel, and it's about transformation. So go inwards and be present with wherever you are in the process. See? You are exactly where you need to be. Feel whatever you need to feel. See? Don't suppress things. Um, it may be hard to be present with some parts of yourself, and that's okay. Bring them into a cocoon of gentle self-love and reflection. Insight will come, shadows can be released, and your heart space will soften. A lot of you have made your heart space very cold. Uh, where was I? Cry or be angry if this is what you are holding on to and laugh at the ironic divine perfection of it all. Journey beyond your constructed outer self where you can delve into the beautiful abyss of your being. 
Revel in the twilight before the dawn and let your wings unfurl. So I feel like a lot of you have kind of put on this mask and this facade where you act like you're mean or cold or you act out of discernment and you act detached but you're really not but you kind of have trained yourself to be that way in your relationships because of the <clears throat> things you've went through in these relationships but the cards are telling you that for the rest of the year you are going to be looking at your relationships so differently there's going to be a positive shift and transformation in the relationships of your life. And I really do feel like it's not just one. It's going to be several different, very important and genuine relationships in your life that are going to be worked on and healed and just grow. So yeah, that is your reading. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you very soon. For everybody that picked pile number two or the black hamsa hand. So this is a good luck charm and it's for good fortune, protection. Specifically, black is for the color of protection. So I feel like a lot of... There's, there's several different messages coming through from your reading. So let's get into the first card. Here we have the six of wands. And when the six of wands comes up, this is talking about a lot of victory, success, triumph, satisfaction, achievement. For the rest of the year, I, f I see a lot of you finding a lot of fulfillment and satisfaction in your career. A lot of success and victories in your career. A lot of little achievements, manifestations, really good energy coming in your career. Also, promotions, rewards, public recognitions... Uh, people, you know, applauding you and people praising you and people just really liking what you're offering. Uh, that's something you should keep out, keep an eye out for the rest of the year because a lot of people are gonna just really like your energy in your career. The next card that we have, which is interesting, because Six of Wands, if there's a there's a message in that card that talks about when you compare yourself to others too much and it really will bang up your confidence. It will really break your confidence if you keep comparing yourself to other people. And then we have the stubborn card here. So if you're testing, testing, if you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance on something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you communicate more lovingly with others and with yourself. So when your confidence is broken, then a lot of us become very stubborn and cold and like detached, you know? So for the rest of the year, just know that you don't have to be cold and detached and tense up. Um, it's okay to listen to the other side. It doesn't mean you're going to have to agree with it, but it's always really nice to see a different perspective. Now, the High Priestess here. High Priestess is telling me that the rest of the year, you're going to focus a lot on your spirituality and a lot of hidden gems from your, from your heart, like your heart space, your heart chakra. A lot of just, I think good things that you've been suppressing are going to start to come out um, so you can experience love. This card is also um, bringing a lot of the energy of the moon, which means emotions, which means your unconscious, your subconscious mind, um, and a lot of unseen potential that needs to be revealed within yourself. So there's a lot of knowledge there, hidden knowledge that just you need to uncover. And for the rest of the year, a lot of you are going to be uncovering that. This card right here, we have Haunted. The breaking of the floor beneath your naked feet. The creaking of the walls as the cold kisses flesh. You're never really alone when in the company of hauntings within bone. So yeah, there's a lot of 
cracks and corners and crevices of yourself that are gonna be revealed to you and they're like hidden gemstones. So don't be stubborn, like listen to everything because there's hidden knowledge in everything that's gonna be going on for the rest of the year for you. Now this card right here, we have the Realm Bridger. That's interesting because I also got like ancestor energy from, from this card. Uh, and then Realm Bridger to me is like, ancestors are the the bridges that connect you to the other realm right as you raise your vibration and explore different states of consciousness you may experience phenomena you believed only happen in fantasy stories see that goes hand in hand with the high priestess which is telling me that a lot of you are going to be in your head and it's going to be a good positive thing though because you're going to be attracting your thoughts and like there's a shift in your mentality, but it's a positive shift and only you will know and only you will experience what that is. Um, through meditation and journeying, we invite a greater awareness of subtle realities. These realms can be amazing places to bring through pioneering ideas and creativity. And that's where you're, uh, you're going to thrive in your job, in your work. Now, this card is about bridging the seen and unseen. Just as water changes from solid to gas to liquid, we can catch the intangible in other forms. Metaphors, codes, even maths can form the path of the visionary. See, keep an eye out. There is going to be opportunity and signs and synchronicities everywhere for the rest of the year for you. From the mind and the heart, visions can merge into matter. See, you're going to be attracting a lot and that's the high priest is telling me that dream outside the box it's time to create the foundations of our realities in a fresh new way things need to be seen in a fresh new way and your hidden gemstones within yourself have to be revealed and that means you know you're going to be going into some deep parts of yourself but it's good because it's much needed You see how she's looking behind her and it's really dark, but she's not really trying to run away from it <laughs> because it's actually going to bring you a lot of good energy and good luck, especially when it comes to your job. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for watching. The rest of 2021 looks like a financially really good year for you, especially in career. So yeah, keep that in mind and I'll talk to you very soon. Pile number three, or everybody that picked the golden Hamsa hand. So this Hamsa hand is infused with oud oil, which is also known as the oil of the gods. Um, it's a very divine, very exotic oil. And it's also infused with pyrite crystals um, and a bunch of oils and herbs for good luck. And Hamsa is known to bring good luck and bestow protection and good fortune upon its owner. If you're interested, you can get this on my shop. But there's a lot going on here in your reading and it's full of synchronicities and surprises and just a burst of energy coming in. So if you've been feeling lazy or maybe you feel like you've just been relaxing too much or just unproductive or whatever, then things are about to change for the rest of the year. The first thing I see here is surrender obsessive thinking. So if you're obsessing about a person or a situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. In this case, this situation is really dragging down your solar plexus chakra um, because I see so much yellow here. Your obsessive thinking is is bringing down your confidence and your ability to you know allow happiness into your life. Um, and solar plexus governs just how much energy we have, how much motivation we have, and confidence and happiness and all that stuff. So a lot of you, what I see is that you're obsessively thinking about something to do with your house, like. I don't know if maybe you're buying a new house, maybe it's some kind of issue in the house or maybe like arguing in the house, something to do with home. Because the Four of Wands card here is upside down. Four of Wands is your roots. It is 
your secure base. It's a very solid foundation. Um, and it's relaxing and resting. And I feel like a lot of you, because you overthink or maybe you think way too much, you won't allow yourself to feel like you are rooted. You don't allow yourself to feel that you're okay, that your foundation is okay and it is solid. A lot of you may want to move like towards the rest of the year sometime towards the end of 2021 you want to move or you decide you want to move something about home or you might want to redecorate um maybe remodel or add or take away i don't know it's just a lot of energy of your house and your home and where you live like the environment that you live in a lot of you are sick and tired of like relaxing like you're tired of being lazy you're tired of being unproductive you're tired of just kind of sitting around you're tired of just waiting around for something um and that's why we have the fool here the fool is new beginnings new chapter it is somebody that is moving forward in their life and they leave their baggage behind a lot of you may be getting rid of a lot of things in your house for the rest of the year. You know, deep cleaning, getting rid of the old things, um, making room and space for the new. Because the Fool is bringing it. The Fool is definitely bringing something new. Okay, so when the Fool pops up in a reading, always pay attention to where he is headed because you are going that way. And here I see the Rooted card. May you never tear the living ritual that is magic merged within the roots of your being, the soil of your soul. Okay, for the rest of the year, a lot of you are going to come across situations that are going to help you feel more grounded, rooted, secure, safe within your foundation and your house and your home. So a lot of things are going to be happening where um, like good positive energy surrounding your house so if you're waiting for like some kind of paperwork to go through regarding your house you may find that in the rest of 2021 it's going to go through um or maybe you know you f are looking for a house and you finally before the end of 2021 you are going to find your house so this reading is all about house and home now this is calling for good luck. Um, so I think you need to invite good luck into your life to help this house and home energy really thrive in your life for the rest of 2021. Now, this card right here, solar plexus chakra, radiant illumination. The solar plexus chakra is the radiant center of your being. Isn't that interesting how you, the colors and what you picked, it's all the same. It holds the vibrant spark that brings your passions to life. Enter this space to step away from playing small, unworthiness, the idea that you are taking up space and insecurity-based competitiveness, like that lazy feeling, right? Allow yourself to be attuned to the abundant life force that resides at your center and be energized and motivated and fueled with inspiration. Bring forth more of what you wish to birth in the world. The, the oud oil is very powerful for manifesting. So that would be, if you guys are interested, get it. <laughs> As you discover a deep and real sense of self-empowerment, you can confidently lift others in celebration, harmonizing differences and shifting hierarchical paradigms into collective co-creation. That's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, the rest of the year, spirit is going to be healing, working on and activating your solar plexus chakra so work more with yellow colors maybe get yellow bed sheets yellow clothes yellow decorations sunflowers yellow is your color for the rest of 2021 it's going to activate your solar plexus and that energy is going to infuse in every other area of your life all right i hope you guys enjoyed this thank you so much for watching 
and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye. For everybody that picked pile number four or the green hamsa. So this hamsa hand right here is infused with money herbs and money oils and money crystals. So what does that tell me? That a lot of you have a lot of money energy headed towards you for the rest of 2021. But there is, there's a few things going on. Um, and let's get into it. The reason I said but is because there's going to be a lot of uh, healing of your relationship with money that is going to be focused on for the rest of the year. So the first thing we have here is surrender to passion. Get out of your head. A lot of you are very much in your head when it comes to money and you stress out about it, you worry about it. You also have this belief in scarcity or scarcity or a lack or there's not enough, or you're always broke, or like pay attention to what you're affirming when it comes to money. What is your relationship with money like? And for a lot of you, you much rather take the direction of lack and scarcity versus your own passion and what excites you and what you want. So for the rest of the year, there's going to be a change in that energy. So we have here Santa Muerte. So whenever this card comes up from her deck, I feel like she shows her presence. So she, of course, is the death card. And she comes to say, you have to grieve something so that you can let it go and put it behind you. And so that new can come. Death will never show up in a reading without something new to replace it something has to go because it's done its time it's it's no longer helping you or benefiting you by you keeping it in your life and i don't know what this is it could be like are you hoarding something are you you know what it has to do with money and letting something go about money like did you maybe one time lose a lot of money and then you just got really traumatized and now you don't want to spend any money like did it really mess up your relationship with money? Did somebody really like backstab you when it came to money? These are all things that you have to heal. And the rest of the year is going to help you do that. So that you can move forward making hell of money. <laughs> um, death also comes to tell you that there's going to be a falling away of old and outgrown feelings, emotions, thoughts, beliefs. Because again, you like you outgrew them. Why are you still clinging onto them? Are it are you too comfortable in these thoughts? Do you feel like if you know you start something else, then it, it's uncertain. You don't know how it will turn out. Again, I'm getting like a lot of it has to do with money. Uh. Okay. So when Santa Muerte death card comes up, it always foretells of an ending of whatever cards may be next to it. So here I see a lot of you ending this lack mentality when it comes to money, which is very, very good. It's good news. And that's something you can look forward to for the rest of the year. Is a real big shift and change in your money mentality. Now, Next up, we have the Six of Cups. Um, if you guys hear that, I think that's the mailman <laughs> opening the door so aggressively. <laughs> uh, the Six of Cups, in this case, is upside down. So a lot of you, I feel like maybe we're juggling way too much. Maybe juggled more than you could handle. Maybe you took on too much financial responsibility. Something happened where you were, it was too much. Like financially, it was too much and it really hindered your relationship with money because cups is all about your emotions. And in this case, it has to do with your emotions about money. A lot of you, Six of Cups is talking about, you're holding on to something in the past. Memories, feelings, trauma, whatever it is and you're stuck there you're kind of stuck in the past and a lot of you has to do with your money energy and because you're stuck in the past you are missing 
everything that's in front of you right now and your future opportunities too. Now this card upside down is telling me this is changing and for Santa Muerte, for death card to be right there in the middle of these two cards, it's screaming at me that your beliefs about money are drastically going to change and in a very good way that is going to help you. Now, coming down here, we have the Magician, and the Magician is right under the Passion card. So for a lot of you, okay, the Santa Muerte card is also the Death card, which is also the Scorpio card. And Scorpio foretells of a lot of orgasmic energy, so orgasms. Head over to my OnlyFans if you want more content, like talking about that kind of stuff. But yeah. The magician uses the tools that nature gives him, that the universe gives him. And he uses the fire in his belly, that passion energy to get what he wants. There is no lack with the magician. And you have Santa Muerte's presence here. The rest of the year is going to be really, really good for you. Financially especially. Get yourself out of the past. Stop. Let it go. Let it be in the past. There's far more good things for you and you don't deserve to be stuck in the past. Now here we have Greet the Darkness. Here where the spine bends and the mouth quivers, breathes the hidden, the pieces that make you whole, but cut deep with all of their sharp edges. See, your relationship with money, it, it's, it has sharp edges and it cuts deep and you're almost afraid of like having too much money. Like you will run away from it. I feel like some of you uh, would really run away from being presented with a lot of money because <laughs> it will freak you out and, and you wouldn't know what to do with it. You would be afraid of, you know, imagine all the lifestyle changes that happen when you come across a lot of money. Your life will change. Your lifestyle will change. You know, things change. Are you ready for the change? And you should be because you're the magician and you have Santa Muerte backing you up. Now, here we have nature spirits. On your toes, twirl and twirl until you're ready to take flight. They arrive in the winds beneath your wings and speak through the swaying of the trees. Spend time in nature. It's going to be very, very good for your healing relationship with money, which is very interesting because... If you garden, you know what I'm talking about. You understand, you know, having patience and watching something grow and taking care of something and feeding it and pruning it and trimming it, all of that stuff. Like, that's kind of what you're going to be doing with your money. You're going to learn how to grow it and nurture it and give it what it needs when it needs it and also to create boundaries. So that's something you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of for the rest of the year is really redefining your energy of money and your relationship with money. Now this right here is the butterfly and we have the wings on top of it, so it's metamorphosis and transformation, rebirth. Oh, you guys should get my butterfly oil. I just restocked it. It's one of my favorite oils to work with. Ooh, I love it. If you guys are interested, head over to Etsy. I'll leave it in the link um, down below. But throat chakra, express your truth. This chakra is the origin of expression. It's the source of the life spark that inspires your aliveness and, st and stokes the creative fires in others. This is the outer sharing of your inner being, the glowing song of your soul on the winds of your flight to understanding more of who you are. Connect to the crew, crew of your potential and take it further than you could have imagined. As spirit fuses into the tangible. I'm going to say that again. As spirit fuses into the tangible, I feel like all of the abundance in your spirit is going to become this tangible financial. It's going to manifest as money. It actualizes as a platform for greater experience and New facets are sculpted, seeded, and shared as a fractal of light in the form of your own unique language. Yeah, 
your things are going to manifest themselves as money to you. Really good rest of the year. You guys are lucky. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.